you joining in, everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. Everybody share this broadcast. Invite your followers and say, Lord, I receive the prophet's reward. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. Get the gospel out. Money Manifest Conference. I'm dealing with something massive on this line right here. Sowing, sowing is not only in the DNA of man, but it is the dominion of man. It's in our DNA to sow. It's in our DNA. This is our dominion. The first man that God ever created, he gave him sowing dominion, sowing decision. It's in your DNA as a born-again child of God to sow. It's a part of you. And, and if you ever find yourself denying that side of you, you'll step into all type of witchcraft. You'll step into all type of stuff that you don't want to be a slave to because this activity was created to stop your mind from entertaining the serpent. Child of God, honoring God, sowing was a weapon that God gave you to destroy all of the seeds of Satan in your heart. Glory to God. He, he gave you the seed. He gave you sowing. He gave you an act of worship where you take what you have. You sow it into your leader on earth. Someone that God uses to teach you the word, deliver you from evil, impart wisdom to you. That's your priest. And while you're doing that supernatural activity, it was to cut off the voice of Satan from your life. The serpent was going to lose its power to deceive you out of the order, the schedule and the will of God. That's what it was given to you for. See, sowing, yes, it brings money to you. Yes, it brings wealth to you. Yes, it brings the blessing to overtake you. But sowing in its purest form, it cuts off the serpent's authority to talk to your mind. Now, what did King Jesus say? Behold, I give you power over the serpent and the scorpion. Saints, he, he, King Jesus gave you the power over the serpent through the seed. Remember what the father said that his seed shall crush the head of the serpent? In Genesis, the seed is the power of God over the serpent and the scorpion and all the powers of the enemy. Saints, how does the devil get you to miss God, to fail God, to sin against God through dishonor? You have to sow yourself to the devil. Let's go here. You have to sow yourself to the devil. In order for you to sin against God, you have to become a seed and sow your decisions into the devil through dishonor. But Satan created corrupt giving and made it sin. But God created uh, Christ giving. Are uh, uh, anointed given and made it your win, made it your victory. But all through the given concept, you got to give yourself over to the devil for you to sin against God. Now, remember what I just said there that the Holy Spirit, he uses the seed as your dominion. It cuts off the serpent's voice from talking to you. One of the major benefits of honoring God with everything that he gives you is that it stops the serpent from manipulating your mind. Bitterness is the manipulation of the serpent. Bitterness is the manipulation of the serpent. Fatigue, weariness, um, distraction, temptation, all of this is all uh, the, 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 the functionality of the serpent. So the seed cuts off your mind 
from trespassing from God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Are you catching this, people of God? See, when you honor God, you stop your mind from going places and staying there. See, something that happens when I'm sowing is that I start to realize, hey, my mind is somewhere it's not supposed to be. So let me get out of here. One thing that seed sowing magnifies is a vain imagination that needs to be evicted. God starts showing you this thought not supposed to live inside of you. This conversation, this seed, this mindset. Now, saints, watch this here. When you're not sowing seed into God, Satan's sowing seed into you. When you're not honoring God with what you have, Satan is honoring you. You say, well, how Satan honors me? He invests in you. He pits pride in you, arrogance in you, deceitfulness in you, um, a hatred for holiness. What is holiness? Being led by the Holy Spirit. That's why I said that those that uh, no, no man will see the Lord without holiness. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Without being led by the Holy Spirit, you can't see the Lord. Why the Lord won't see you if you got another spirit? <laughs> Why, why the Lord, think about it. Why, why the Lord going to want to see you if you got another spirit? You see what I'm saying? And so holiness is going to be a Holy Spirit led lifestyle. And when you're honoring God, it makes you more enthusiastic about righteousness. It makes you more enthusiastic about God's plan for your life. You no longer become adversarial to the rules and regulations of God over your life. You start agreeing with your convictions. You start agreeing with your convictions. The Lord tell you not to talk to somebody. You ain't got to pray five times to pray to get delivered from talking to them. The seed, when you're in a spirit of honor, you already want to agree with God and you say, yes, Lord. You don't want me to talk to him no more? Fine, so be it. I guess I got to go through the pain of disconnection, but that's just the way it is. Even Tupac prophetically said it. Huh? Glory to God. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Even Tupac said it. Shoot. That's just the way it is. One of the powers of seed sowing is that you're no longer going to wrestle with God with dishonor, but you're going to wrestle with God with honor. And when you wrestle with him, you won't let him go until he bless you. And this is so powerful to me. I, I got Galatians 6 right here. I'm in Galatians 6. I'm about to read Galatians 6. But I got, I got to share this. This in my spirit. One of the benefits of seed sowing is you stop wrestling with God in the flesh, but you start wrestling with God in the spirit. Now you're telling the Lord, I'm ready for what you promised me. I'm ready for what you told me I could have. I'm ready for the blood covenant to manifest in my life. Every benefit, everything that belongs to me, everything. So the seed, it keeps you in the face of God and it keeps God reminiscing about what he prophesied to you. It keeps the Lord in the mindset, where do you need my help in your life, daughter? Where do, you, where do you need my assistance in your life, son? That's the powerful thing. When you start taking what you have and finding a creative portion of it and sowing it into your prophet, sowing it into your prophet's life. Everybody going to have a prophet if you're going to follow God. Everybody going to have a prophet. Everybody going to have somebody that God is going to use them somehow to deliver you, to bless you, to impart wisdom to you. Everybody got a prophet. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give God all the praise here. Now, let's go to this text here. As you're joining in, share this broadcast. Uh, Psalm 103, verse 2, and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. S um, Psalm 103, verse 2 says, Praise ye the Lord, my soul, 
and forget not all his benefits. There are benefits to you honoring God and pinning him number one in your financial equation. Now, you got to invite the Holy Ghost to be the Lord over your finances. You got to invite him. If you don't invite him, you're going to spend, you're going to do what everybody else is doing, and the Lord not going to be pleased with your decision making with money. Do you know that you can be in a place in this life where the Holy Spirit is not in agreement with how you're handling money? And you can grieve the Spirit of God with how you handle money. You can be further along in life if you will submit your money affairs to the Lord Jesus. Because he want to help you. And remember, the Lord Jesus is rich. He always been rich. He always will be rich because he is the ruler of everything. John chapter 1 says that everything was created by him. So it's impossible for him to be poor. It's impossible. If you create everything, you ain't got to be a rocket scientist. If you're the God of the universe, you ain't got to be super smart to know that somebody is the richest person. He has given you access to all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. I think that's Ephesians. He has given you access to all heavenly, um, uh, heavenly blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. All spiritual blessings. Now, saints, even though you have seen many people that don't serve God with riches, riches is a spiritual blessing. Now, the people that got it, that don't serve God, God has them in the bracket of thieves. It's called the wealth of the wicked. They are not going to go to heaven after they enjoy those riches. But, but there are something called uh, the true riches. And King Jesus talked about it in the book of Luke. He talked about the true riches, how he going to test you with the mammon of the wicked, the mammon of this world, which is the money that come from uh, your job, is money that come from social security, all that different type of stuff. He going to test you with that type of money, governmental assistance money. He going to test you with that type of money before he give you the true riches. Now, the true riches is money that is going to be overflowing. And sometimes it's even going to be overwhelming. And this money going to be able to take care of you. Take care of what concerns you. And it's going to even empower you to take care of somebody else on the earth. I've taken care of many people on the earth. I've taken care of many people on the earth. The, the, the presence of God want to bring you into this portal. And it's available to you and you can take a hold of it. The glory of God is strong enough for you to have wealth, riches, abundance, and not sin against God with it. The glory of God. But see, I want to say this to you. The hedge of sowing seed protects you from pride when God make you rich. As long as you let that sowing anointing sit on you, it'll protect you from pride. It'll protect you from arrogance where you lack teachability. Once you step into arrogance, you can't be taught, you can't be corrected, you can't be convicted. The hedge of seed sowing, it protects you. It delivers you from corruption and evil and wickedness and stubbornness and error. So that when you have wealth, when you have riches, you won't be rebellious with that. You can stay humble. Every time God tells you to sow a seed, it is a door to humility. It's the door to the fear of God. To keep you out of the flesh. Every time God tells you to sow, he giving you the grace not to become a rebel, a devil. Because saints, that's what he was doing with Adam, the first man. He was having that first man operate in seed. And as that man was operating in seed, he had humbled himself. God was his trust. He trusted the Lord. The Lord was his safety. 
God never meant for money to become your safety. The, the, the sickening thing is that even if you're a child of God, you're going to start putting your trust in money. And every time money comes to you, you're going to hold on to it and, and, and try to hold it. Money was created to be sown. It's, an, it's, it's a device of worship. You don't worship money, but you use money to worship God. You got to manipulate your money because your money will manipulate you. If you don't use your money to converse with God, money will converse with you against God. Come on. If you don't train your money to bow its knee to King Jesus, money will get you to stop bowing your knee to King Jesus. I done did all type of broadcasts on here. I probably asked for seed on, on this page, Facebook Live. I got over 100,000 followers. I probably asked for seed probably about, what? Probably about six, less than six times, five, four times. And I done did all these broadcasts on here. I'm not a man that's driven by money. But I am driven by the fact that I'm tired of seeing people that Jesus love abort their covenant to be rich. And then you still, you know, being poor, it, it, it got some backlashes to it. People get in wrong relationships because they poor. You get with a man because you think that he's going to take care of you. You get with a, a woman because you think she's going to take care of you. All the different type, different type of stuff, and it's not the will of God. You go work jobs. You go pursue careers. You go back to school. Get education uh, 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 accomplishments because you're trying to make more money. Not having money could be a, a, a gate to hell. And it, it, it often produces the wrong decisions when you're eager to have money because you know that you're supposed to have it. And it can subject you to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a system, is the Babylonian system, and it's currently operating right now in this world's government. Saints, I didn't apply for a stimulus check. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I don't, I don't even mess with no social security. I don't do none of that stuff. I don't give away my social security stuff. I don't, I don't mess with none of that stuff. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need them. And I never need them. And some of you are on here. You on social security. Don't curse your social security and start talking about, oh, I'm like Prophet Joshua Holmes. I don't need them either. No. You praise God that he chose to do, uh, provide for you in a special way. You give him glory and find a way to sow a creative portion of that social security when you get it and name your seed. Name your seed. Don't stop dreaming. One of the curses of social security, though, is it make you feel as if that's the only income you ever going to receive for the rest of your life. And God never wanted that. You got to be careful that you don't receive the spirit of social security. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You, listen, God will use those food stamps, but don't receive the spirit of food stamps. Because the spirit of food stamps going to make you pit all of your food dreams into that $500, that $400, that $300, $600. You're going to think that that's the only money you're going to get. See, when God is providing for you from an outlet, don't receive the spirit from that outlet. Stay in the spirit of God because the spirit of God will tell you how to take that money and flip it and you'll multiply it and, and you'll have so much money that you won't even, you'll, you'll, you'll start looking down at the fact that you were subject to that because you got so much more money. Anything that you put in the Lord's hands, multiply it grows. It comes back to you greater than which you sown it. God will give everybody a soul, a prophet, an apostle, somebody that has authority that when you sow into them, they're going to teach you the word. They're going to feed your spirit. And as they're feeding your spirit, they're breaking the yoke off of your whole oh, Messiah. They're breaking the yoke off of your soul, your substance. And your submission to God. See, the strong man come to tie up your goods. 
But there's a strong anointing that breaks all of the blockage and the hostage of the strong man. There's a strong anointing and your man of God got it. Destroy the yoke and take you from glory to glory. And, and let me say this to you. The Holy Spirit, he will lead you perfectly if you submit yourself in this direction. Isaiah 48 verse 17 says, I am the Lord and I teach you how to profit. I teach you how to make money. I teach you how to have wealth. I teach you how to have finances. That's what it's telling you. Now, let me go to Galatians chapter six, verse eight. For he that soareth, no, no, no. Let's go to Galatians 6, 6. It says, let him that is taught the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. You see what they said, people of God? It says, let him that is taught the word. When you're being taught the word, it says, communicate to your teacher. In all the good things. You know what this means? That God going to send you a rabbi in this life. They're going to be full of Jesus. They're going to teach you profound, extraordinary wisdom. They're going to show you and give you understanding of the scriptures. They're going to mentor you and they're going to keep you on the straight and narrow path. And when you want to go to the left and to the right, they're going to stand right there in your face and they're going to give you life. They're going to correct you into life. They're going to chasten you into the right direction. They're going to show you the appropriate decision that God is looking for you to make. And they're going to, they're going to give you the, the insight of how to carry yourself, how to behave yourself, how to respond to loneliness, temptation, sin, uh, bad habits, bad company. They're going to show you. And God said, when I give you a teacher, communicate with them in all good things. That means sowing to them, protect them, serve them, help them out with their assignment. Take away their stress. Don't be someone that they got to keep on correcting and begging and, and saying, I need you to do this for me. No, be a volunteer. Help them preach the gospel. That's why I tell all of you all that follow me here to share the broadcast because you helping me. And then I say, I say, uh, tell the Lord, I received the prophet's reward. I feel the anointing going down my arm, man. Oh, Jesus. I stand in the presence of God. I feel the anointing as I'm talking. This, oh, my God. Saints, I come to tell you tonight that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand. See, you didn't really catch that and say that the kingdom of God is at hand. Your sowing hands unlocks the kingdom. God uses your own hands to bring you into abundant life. The location of the kingdom is at your hand. The reason why you have a hand is for you to sow. God going to put money in your hands, you put money back into God's hand. Well, how do I do it? I don't see God nowhere. You put it in the hand of the teacher that he sent to your life to teach you. I don't even want to read that. Since this anointing flowing on this line, some of you all got to catch it. What I'm giving you is powerful and enough. It's powerful and enough. What I'm showing you on here, I'm showing you that you don't have to stay another day looking at other people and saying, I wish this was me. You have been given a supernatural portal from God. And if you would walk in it and be sincere You'll see things open up for you in your life that your parents never saw. None of your biological siblings ever saw. He'll take you into the glory realm of provision. Now, saints, King Jesus died to provide you strength to overcome sin, but he, he died to provide you strength 
to overcome poverty and financial issues. You, you, you was never supposed to have your life stuck at one financial degree. No, you can change that. Somebody need to hear me on this. You're not subject to social security checks, SSI, uh, disability. You're not subject to that. You can change what you're receiving and what you're uh, possessing if you learn to honor God with it. You don't, you don't have to settle for being stressed out about what I'm going to do. No, you could put it in the hands of the Lord Jesus and let him multiply it. And now, here's what I love about King Jesus. King Jesus not only multiplies your seed sown, but he gives you other favors with that seed. And so, you will find yourself experiencing doors to health. He'll show you how to step into health, deliverance, mentally. He'll cure you of insomnia. I've had many people in my ministry, they had insomnia, and God took away their insomnia all through the seed. All through honoring God. When they was honoring God, God went into their life wherever satanic activity was ruling and he gave them victory. You use the seed to bombard Satan where he bullying you. You use the seed to bombard Satan where he bullying you. Wherever Satan is, 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 is um, enslaving your life, the seed goes there. And delivers you from that yoke, from that bondage, from that prison. That's the power of the seed. See, God already going to multiply the seed and give you more money. But one of the bigger pictures of that is this. The Lord also going to multiply whatever divine qualities you have. And so if you have a divine quality to serve people. God going to multiply that servanthood ability. So you're going to find yourself serving at a higher level. And then God going to magnify problems that you have the authority to fix for others that you're assigned to. Not everybody. You can't fix everybody's problem. But whoever you assign to, you're going to start seeing how you could be a relief system for their life. If you're Ability is faith. God going to multiply your faith. If your ability is leadership, he going to multiply your ability to direct. So all those different parts of you that is divine, the seed goes there and multiplies it. Now, here's what's so glorious that also the seed takes what has been stolen from your personality and restores it back to you? Saints, do you understand that sometimes you are a legendary individual, but you've been through so much stuff in your life that it depletes you of that legendary quality quality, and you, you don't trust people and you shy, you afraid to, to be in front of people? The seed goes and deals with all of those characteristics of greatness and restores it back to you. Gives you back all that you've been depleted of. Your boldness, your excellence, your courage, your consistency, your, um, your teachability, your willingness, your uh, patience. Um, all of those divine qualities, your uniqueness, your creativity. The seed multiplies your creativity. When you're honoring God, the Lord starts to multiply the area in you where you can think about what is God looking for me to bring to the earth? What do I have in me? 
that God can use for the glory of his kingdom. That's why ideas start coming to you. You start becoming an entrepreneur of divine wisdom. Your wisdom goes to the next level because you're honoring God. Adam was a genius every time he was putting that seed in God's hands. Adam was a genius every time he was putting that seed in God's hands. Every time he was sowing that seed, he had a prophetic anointing on him that he kept on tapping into. He went from glory to glory to glory, faith to faith. Every time Adam was sowing that seed into the Lord, he went to a new place. But saints, in Genesis chapter 4, it's so powerful because Adam has a son. He has two sons. One of them name is Cain. Uh, we should have named him Cocaine. <laughs> That's just a little jokey joke. Um, and then he had Abel. Now, Abel, his name was prophetic because he stepped into the ability of God. He realized that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight. And so Abel stepped into God's ability to sow. Now, saints, I want you to catch this, that the Bible said that Abel, God respected his seed. God respected the seed of Abel which was very powerful because hereby you find a portal of how to show respect to God through seed sowing. Sowing seed is how you magnetize God's respect towards you. God respects people when they receive money, when they receive provision, and the first thing that they think about is how could I show the Lord my appreciation with what I receive? Saints, think about this. Abel had started to, to, to get the Lord to look at him in an authoritative way. Abel unleashed the God realm in himself every time he was sowing to God. But he, he started taking notice that it was the Lord putting things in his hands and Abel had a seed discernment. Oh my God, some of y'all got to remember that. Uh, who, who can write me that on here? Seed discernment. Seed discernment. Money manifests. Money manifests. Abel had seed discernment. And so Abel, he didn't take what God was giving him and just spend it on what he wanted or do what he want with it. He knew that it was supposed to uh, uh, pass a test. He knew that God was giving him provision to test him, to try his heart. Wow, wow. Saints, how many times in your life have the Lord, over all these years you have lived, the Lord has given you stuff and tried you to see what you was gonna do with it and you never acknowledged him? You took it and put it where you wanted it. You invested it where you wanted it. How many times in your life, people of God, that you live your whole life subject to all type of things, demonic activity, because you're not listening to God with what he pits in your hands. See, I want to say this to you. The seed creates a covenant of communication with you and God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Ain't that powerful, y'all? The seed creates a covenant of communication between you and the Lord. The Lord communicates with you and talks to you and give you insight about your next move. He give you insight. He give you understanding. Your flesh hates sowing. 
Your flesh is a thief. Your flesh don't want a soul. Your flesh want to save and love a saving account. I don't have a savings account. And I have a worldwide ministry. I have a lot of things that I have to handle. I have a lot of things that I have to handle. And I don't have a savings account. It's not that I don't have a savings account because um, 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 it's not because of that. It's just I know that the seed is supposed to be operating in my life. I don't want money to stay still and try. I don't want to save my life with money. I want to I want to save God's respect towards me with money. Some of y'all are going to have to catch that in the spirit. My God. You're not going to catch that in the natural. If you're in the flesh, you ain't going to catch what I just said. I said, I'm not trying to save myself with money. I want to save God's respect towards me. The Lord checks up on your stewardship, your loyalty to him by putting stuff in your hands and seeing how you sow it, how you deal with it. And if you don't have the proper spirit, guess what's going to happen? The Lord going to know that he can't trust you with more. Now, here's the thing. God always has more money for you. He's rich. God is not a trillionaire. He's not a zillionaire. He owns all money. And when he's ready, he, he, can, he can put that money in your hands. And so you have to keep that in your mind when he's giving you instructions, when he's telling you what to do. If you start looking in the natural and start saying, well, who knows me? How am I get it? What's going to happen for me? That's just going to blind you. That's just going to blind you from the fact that the Lord not trying to strip you of finances. He trying to equip you with finances. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He not trying to strip you of money. He trying to uh, equip you with money. Now, saints, money has to be preached. And I have that assignment on my life because I sow every day of my life. Every day I sow money into the gospel, every single day. Every day of my life, I sow over hundreds of dollars into the gospel. And some days I sow over hundreds of dollars into the gospel every single day. And so I'm not a hypocrite of this. I am a giver. Everything that I possess, everything that I possess is a harvest. If you will learn to pit your dreams in front of you with moderation, You use the dream as a as a um, as inspiration to keep on obeying God, but you got to do it with moderation because if you exalt your dream too strong, every single dollar that gets into your hands, you're gonna try to fulfill your dream with it. You're gonna try to make your dream happen. Okay, I'm gonna pit this towards my house. I'm gonna pit this towards my apartment. I'm gonna pit this towards my new car. And God don't want you to do that. He want to give it to you. You remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God, all his righteousness and all other things shall be added. Matthew 6, 33, he going to add it to you. He don't want you to go seek it out. When you start seeking it out, that's when you step into the spirit of mammon, greed, um, anxiety. You start stepping into all those demonic uh, traits. And you don't want that to happen. You want to be able to have a pure heart and see God as your provider. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. You want to stay in the proper uh, activity to receive your harvest. Now your flesh hates sowing. Your flesh want to secure itself. Every time you get money, your flesh want to do what it wants with that money. Your flesh want to take ownership of seed money and decide to spend it on bills and everything else and handle everything else and buy things. That's, that's what your flesh want to do. But your spirit loves to honor God. 
Your spirit loves to be sensitive to how you could celebrate God with that money, with that provision, with whatever gets in your hands. Your spirit loves the opportunities to give God your best. You understand? Your spirit wants to sow thousands. Your flesh don't want to sow nothing. And, and then when your flesh sees that your spirit is starting to sow, your flesh will tell your spirit, don't sow all that. Hold on to this. That's what your flesh does. But your flesh don't understand that seed multiplies. So if I give a thousand dollars, it's going to come back to me a hundred thousand. And let me just say that thousand dollars seed, it may not come back to you hundred thousand, it may come back to you hundred million. <laughs> Shoot. Some of y'all thought it was gonna go lower. No. We we serve a big God. You thought it was gonna go smaller than that, say it might come back to you in a different way. No, baby, I'm talking about money. When you sow a thousand dollars, it may come back to you a hundred thousand, it may come back to you in a hundred million, but it's gonna come back to you greater than what you sold it. Seed, seed. Seed comes back as a makeover in the realm of harvest. It doesn't come back in the same shape, the same size. If you sow the seed in your skinny realm, it's going to come back to you in an in a obese harvest. If you sow the, a seed that was in the skinny realm, the seed going to come back to you as a harvest of obesity. It's going to come back fatter than what you sold it. And, and see, you got to understand that when you step into this seed life, as long as you sowing into the right man of God, you sowing into the, the, the prophet of God that God put in your life, he using to teach you, as long as you sowing into the right person, you name the seed, you praise God, you sanctify yourself, don't be hanging around people that's going to mess up your harvest because God can't give you stuff if you're going to let wrong people use it and enjoy it. If, if, if God want to give you a brand new car and you're going to use that car to have all type of people in there, imagine how, how God going to get the car to you. How he going to get it to you because he know that it's going to be used incorrectly and you're going to allow wrong people to enjoy it, which is not good. Let me go here. Um, let's go to. Uh, I want to go to. Uh, we already dealt with uh, communicate with him that's teaching you the word. Let's go to verse seven. Be not deceived. Galatians six, verse seven. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Look what it says, be not deceived. Meaning that Satan, when you're in the area of sowing, you're also in an area of great deception. Wow. Wow. L listen to this, people of God. I, I, you never heard it like this here. You heard many people teach on this. But when you choose to become a sower, you're also in an area of great deception. So you got to be careful who you allow to speak in your ear. Don't pick who you want to sow into. Let God do that. Because God knows who's a, who, 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 who uh, is your God assigned teacher, your God assigned prophet. Because this is an area of great deception. So it, before it talks about sowing and reaping, it says be not deceived. Meaning... Do not tread on these grounds without the whole armor of God. You're going to have to pray in the spirit. You're going to have to seek the face of God. You're going to have to ask God for wisdom and understanding. And you're going to have to constantly be praising God because you don't want to make wrong moves and set yourself around the mountain when you can just destroy the mountain. You see this? It says, be not deceived.
God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, here's the second part. It says God is not mocked. Now, here's what's so powerful. This is the, the, the area where the Lord is saying, I will not let you sow correctly and not receive what I promise you. I'm not going to let you sow in obedience to my instruction and then still end up struggling at a loss, at a deficit. I'm not mocked. This also means that Satan will not be able to say that my system didn't work. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you catching this? Satan is not going to be able to say this person sold and, and they ain't get no harvest. This person gave to God and look at them now. They poor, they homeless, they sick, they all type of stuff. He is not mocked. Satan not going to be able to mock him. And also this third realm that I want to talk about is that God is not foolish. He knows that you sowing a seed. He know that you naming your seed. He know that you believe in for a harvest. He know that you want your life to change. He know that you want the hundredfold, that you want your life to be blessed. He know all that different type of stuff. He not unaware of his covenant. Wow. That's why Psalm 89 verse 34 said, my covenant I will not break nor alter the things that has gone out of my mouth. Are you seeing this? So even God had made up in his mind, I will not ignore the benefits of seed sowing. Look what it says here. Whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if you're sowing money, that's where your reaping is going to be. God is going to multiply that area of your life. Look at this here. But let's go to the next part. Verse 8. It says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Now, saints, are you catching this? Corruption means satanic activity, means Satan going to be able to sow seed into you. Say, the serpent going to be able to sow seed into you. So it says that if you sow to your flesh, if you give into your flesh and you refuse God's system and you choose to lean to your own understanding, you're going to reap a harvest of corruption. So your life going to be corrupted. You're not going to be the person that God created you to be. Your mind going to be corrupted. Your thinking going to be corrupted. Your words going to be corrupted. Your desires, your appetites, who you want to be around. Everything is going to be corrupted if you rob God of what his kingdom system is about. So, so even non-sowers are actually sowers. They're just sowing without the proper reward coming to them. The reward going to be corruption. Even people that don't sow are still sowing. Because when you don't sow into God, you got to sow into Satan. You got to sow into demons. You got to listen to evil spirits giving you instructions. So even people that don't listen to prophetic instructions, they're still listening to an instructor. But it's just a fallen angel. It's a demon spirit. Oh, my God. Now, look at this here. The next part says, he that soareth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. So here's what's so powerful about the seed. Sowing to the spirit means that I am giving myself over to take instructions from the Lord. Not only from the Lord, to clarify this, from the prophet assigned to my life. I'm receiving divine instructions and I'm giving my whole energy, my mind, my servanthood, my honor, my giving to that. Look what it says. It says that once you start sowing to the spirit, 
you will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, saints, it shows you how sowing is connected to eternity. Wow. Everybody in heaven is a sower. Angels sow. You think angels don't get paid? God is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. He didn't just say people. Angels seek God all the time. You never thought about that, did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him. Angels seek God all the time. So, so angels get rewards from God. You think that God not going to take care of angels that bow down and worship him? We take care of people that bow down and worship us. <laughs> they do what we tell them to do. We give them jobs. We give them uh, all type of stuff. We give them job descriptions, say you hired to do this and we pay them. You think God don't pay the angels? You think that the angels don't got their hair done? And so watch this. Every time angels get paid, they sow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Every time angels get paid, They sow. Angels sow all the time. That's why when angelic presence is in your life, they will quicken you back into sowing. They will lead you to the man of God that will give you an awareness to start sowing. That's the work of angels. You know, demons connect you to people that's not supposed to be in your life. Well, angels connect you to people. Uh, uh, connect you to a man of God that has an apostolic authority on him to train you into sowing. Angels do that. Angels lead you right to your man of God so that you can sow into him. That's your priest. Angels will take you out of the company of people that's not honoring God. Do you know that angels... They strategically will break up relationships where you and people have y'all arguing because y'all not supposed to be connected. They are non-sower and you got a destiny that's going to be unlocked by the seed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a destiny that's unlocked by the seed. So the Holy Spirit don't want you to be around a non-sower because bad company going to corrupt. And I want to say this, bad company not only corrupt good character, because goodness can be misunderstood, it, cor it corrupt God character. I just put it that way so that you can understand it. God character means that you got characteristics of God, and one of his characteristics is sowing. God so loved the world that he sold his only begotten son. He gave, he was a cheerful giver. All of your deliverance is connected to cheerful giving. You couldn't have eternal life unless there was a cheerful giver named the Father. The great God Jehovah. It was the great God Jehovah that sowed his seed and birthed the power in you to be a virtuous woman. You can't even be a prophet of God, a, a man of God. Unless the father sowed his seed. And, and watch what the father did. He gave us the darling of heaven. The darling of heaven. He gave us the bright and the morning star. He gave us the great I am. He placed himself in a body. And gave us his best seed. Saints, think about that. That. All of your freedom is connected to cheerful giving. If the father would have never gave the bountiful seed, you would have never had power over your thoughts. If the father didn't sow a bountiful seed, his best seed, 
you would have never had power over fear, anxiety, a drifting mind. So if the father used his bountiful seed, how much more bountiful sowing brings you a Jesus reaction in your health? A Jesus reaction in your, your, your focus on God. A Jesus reaction in your consistency. A Jesus reaction. Saints, I just heard the Spirit of God say that. How your seeds birth a Jesus reaction harvest. Oh my God. Oh my God. Underneath this new covenant, your seed birth a Jesus reaction harvest. So you become a, a, a recipient of Jesus reactions. Jesus reaction to, to in your health. For your health. Um, sowing is so prophetic that when you sow in, especially when you sow into a prophet, your prophet transfers his spirit to you through sowing. And so the level and the measure of the anointing, the mantles of God that's on that prophet start flowing in you, on you as you sow. Remember what uh, Apostle Paul was talking about, that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. It talked about the spirit of the prophet. The prophet spirit is so powerful that God uses the prophet spirit to be um, recycled from generation to generation. Why do you think that King Jesus said, if you can handle it, John the Baptist is prophet Elijah? Because... John the Baptist had Elijah's spirit. This is how powerful the prophet spirit is. That God uses the prophet spirit in every generation to bring the body of Christ back to its first love. Pitting the Lord Jesus first. Its first love. Pitting him first in their money. Remember, it was Malachi that told the people, you robbing God. It was a prophetic voice. Some people never thought about that. It was prophet Malachi that said, y'all not giving. Y'all not sowing no seed. Y'all robbing God. You taking the money and doing what you want with it. It was prophet Malachi that came to quicken the people of God back to their first love. What prophet Joshua Holmes doing, I come to tell you, it been done before. But I've been sent in these last days to quicken you as the bride of Christ back to his first love. See, sowing is when the Lord is your first love. See, if God, see, I, I want some of y'all to see this. For some of y'all, Jesus haven't been your first love. Your bill's been your first love. Your traveling being your first love. You want to travel everywhere. Or oh, I'm about to go on another trip. Baby, how are you going on all these trips and your sewing account empty? How come you owe God all this large money? And, 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 and then for some of you all, your lottery tickets being your first love. Your lottery tickets. You, you've, been, you've been playing your lottery tickets. You've been going to the casino. How could you sow money into the casino and, and you expect to get money back and hopefully you win, but you never, you never tried the system of God sowing and reaping? Come on, baby. Come back home. Come back home. Come back home. I've been sent as an apostle apostolically to tell you that you have a place in Jesus' heart to sow into him. Some of you all been wondering why you don't have no encounters with angels. Why all this stuff not happening for you? I want more of the presence of God. I want more of the power of God. Baby, you got to start doing what he want. He don't want your mouth to honor him. He wants your hands to honor him. You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Get your heart in honor towards God and start sowing seed. You got to start somewhere. Start taking a creative portion of what you have and sow it into God. The Lord not concerned about your sweet words. 
Give the Lord some sweet loving with your giving. How many of you all want a man that say that he love you and never give you nothing? Or how many of you all want a woman that say that she love you and never give you nothing? Huh? No. You hear them tell you that they love you, but when they start giving you a gift or give you something nice that you can enjoy, you experience the love. So my question to you is, how could the Lord Jesus experience your love if you're not taking what he give you the power to make? He give you the strength to go to that job. He give you the favor to receive SSI. He gave you favor to receive food stamps. He gave you favor to receive governmental assistance. How come you not taking a portion of that and honoring God with it? You see that? How are you not honoring God with all that he has put in your jurisdiction? So saints, when you have seed discernment and you start honoring the Lord, guess what start happening? The spirit of God partners with you. The angels of the Lord, the ministering spirits, prosperity angels, ministering spirits of harvests, ministering spirits of provision, ministering spirits of money. They're responsible for the wealth transference. They're responsible for great grace to rest upon you that you have no lack. Man, there's so much stuff I want to talk to you about. There's so much stuff that I want, I want to talk to you about. But saints, sowing money is more than just getting money back. You're going to get money back. But I'm telling you that sowing money protects your holiness. It keeps you sanctified. It delivers you from doing things that grieve God. When you a seed sower, you don't pick God first with your money, your provision. The spirit of God will talk to you about things in your life that you need to change. Stuff that you need to stop speaking about. Your conviction will go to the next level because God don't want you to abort the harvest that's coming to you. So he starts showing you stuff about yourself that needs training. Stuff about you that needs more loyalty. Saints, God, God get impressed when you focus. But God commits himself to you when you become focused. When you choose to focus the same way you chose to focus, you can choose to be distracted. But when you become focused, meaning I don't care what comes my way. I'm sticking to what you said, Jesus. I don't care. Y'all can slap me. You can crucify me. Do what you want to do. You're going to have to do it, baby, because I'm going to stick with what Jesus told me. Go ahead and do it. Throw it at me. because I, I... Stephen was full of wisdom. And they went go stone Stephen. And Stephen said, I'm not going to change what I, what I believe here. Y'all going to have to stone me. Y'all going to have to pick up your stones and do what you got to do. Because I'm going to stick to the word of the Lord. I'm not changing for no, no, nobody. I'm sticking to the word of the Lord. Stephen made up in his mind that he was going to stay focused and committed. You're going to have to make up your mind to do that same thing if you're going to make it with the Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 20 verse 35 says, King Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Acts chapter 20 verse 35. You know why it's more blessed to give? Look what it's telling you. Bless means that you empowered to be successful with God. You're empowered to prosper with the Lord. Remember uh, Genesis chapter 39, I believe, 37, 39. It says that the presence of the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. It was the presence of God creating his prosperity. Wow. I did a teaching last night. I said that your prophet is the presence of God. That explains everything. Joseph, he prospered because of the presence of God. And no wonder God keep putting a prophet in everybody's life that's destined to go to heaven. God will put a prophet in your life. No wonder he put a prophet in your life. Because your prophet is your prosperity manifested. Your prophet is a revelation 
that prosperity is now scheduled for your life because God going to use that prophet to teach you all the things that God likes. That's what Moses was doing. What was Eli doing with Samuel? Teaching him how to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. He was teaching him how to listen to instructions. That's the prophetic anointing. That's the prosperity anointing. Prosperity anointing teaches you how to listen to prophetic instructions. Some of y'all going to have to write that down. That's some good stuff. That the prophetic anointing teaches you to listen to prophetic instructions. Dad, there's so much places I want to go right now. Because this is, this is all in the word of God. I know I'm preaching to you out of my spirit, but it's all in the word of God. I could go so many places right now, show you the word of God, because I'm enthusiastic about this, because you don't want to live these last days as a slave. After King Jesus done, done shed his blood, laid down his life for you to inherit the blessing of Abraham. Galatians chapter three, verse 13 and 14 says that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, being made a curse for you. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's so much stuff that I could tell you right now, and I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a bit of this. I may have to continue another time because I'll be on here for hours. And I don't mind. I don't mind because I want you to get it. It's more than you just sowing money. It's more you got to pick God first with what he put in your hand. He loved that. It's not hard. King Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I'm a sower. I sow every day. I had to train myself, though. I had to train myself to sow because your flesh, your flesh is not a sower. Your flesh is a thief. Your flesh takes everything that God pits in your presence and say, how could I steal this from God? Lucifer was a thief. Why you think that Lucifer now is, is, is infecting people from, from the, 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 the pattern of honoring God that he's been looking for? Okay, let's go here. Acts chapter four, verse 33. And with great power, the Lord gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Great grace was upon them all. Verse 34, Acts chapter four, verse 34. Neither was any among them that lacked. So all of them was wealthy. All of them was rich. This the body of Christ. So, so the same way that you put emphasis on miracles, all the different type of stuff. Look what it says here. It says that all of them, none of them lacked. It says, neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses, they sold their houses and brought the money of the things that were sold. And they laid the money down at the apostles' feet. Now this after King Jesus died. This after King Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. This after. This is after. Look what it says here. It says that they brought all the money from the houses that they sold. They had owned houses. They sold the house, got the proceeds back all the, for the money that they sold the house for, and they laid down the money at the apostles' feet. Saints, I want you to think about this. The church 
had to learn about sowing seed to do this. These people were sowing millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars into the apostles off of their houses. But look at their level of honor. They had went go sold their house just so that they can sow big money. Their man of God, their apostle became first priority. But this is what they was operating in. No wonder money cometh was operating in their life. No wonder wealth was operating in their life. No wonder they had so much financial miracles because their man of God that was laboring for their soul, they wanted to sow into their man of God. They wanted to please their man of God. They wanted their apostle to wear the best, drive the best, live the best. That's what they wanted. Their mentality was way different. You can get back to that. Holy Spirit will bring you back to the kingdom of God. Look what it says. They laid down their money at the apostles' feet. None of them lacked. They took all the money and laid it down at the apostles' feet. Say, it's no wonder they're walking in such harvests. See, your man of God is, is your wealth in disguise. Your prophet of God is your prosperity, hidden, but it's being made manifest to you through your prophet. All of God's promises is inside of your prophet of God. That's why so many people go around the mountain, go around the mountain, because they deny their Moses. Your Moses, you ain't got to keep on going around the mountain. If you listen to Moses, Moses come to bring you into the land flowing with milk and honey. Now, let me go here. You, you have to kill the flesh so that your soul can receive the mantle of bountiful sowing. Not only giving, but giving God something that matters to you. When your seed don't, your, when, you, when you just giving seeds just because, okay, I know I'm supposed to sow. It didn't mean nothing to you and not going to mean nothing to God. Let me just tell you something. When you sow incorrect, it's going to take energy out of you. It's going to take virtue out of you. When you sow incorrect, I done sold seed that when I sowed the seed, I felt like my whole life stopped. But it was a secret to me unlocking the blessing of the Lord over myself. Look what verse 6 say. I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. But I say that he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. That means that if you are a small sower, if you take small portions out of your money and you sow, you only going to receive small. Because God can't trust you with big money. So he got to give you small money until. And watch this here. Sparingly sowing. Is, is a is a percentage of pride. Because there's a dimension of you, there's a percentage of you that wants to save itself, wants to make sure itself is good. And so I don't want to really surrender to the Holy Spirit. It don't want to surrender to the Holy Spirit. That's what's happening. And so it's a side of you that's still trying to analyze the future and try to prepare for your own future and say, I, I got to make sure I'm good. 'cause I was homeless uh I was homeless years ago. You understand so so I can identify with with moving up from sowing sparely to sowing bountifully. I can identify with this because 
I, I disciplined myself to sow. And I made up in my mind that whatever it took for me to sow, I was going to do it. I had to break through all of the distractions to sow my way into the future that the Lord had for me. Look what it says. It says, but he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. That means if you sow big money, you're going to reap big money. If your giving is going up, so is your lifestyle. The level in which you're sowing is the level in which you're attracting. You're magnetizing the creativity of your sowing. However you're creatively operating your seeds, that's, that's, that's a portrait of what you're going to receive from God. Look at this here. It says that if you sow bountifully, you shall also reap bountifully. Look at verse seven. Every man according to as he purposes in his heart. So your heart was given to you by God to create purposes to sow. So imagine how much heart attacks you have had in this life. Because heart attacks is where the devil attacks your heart and gets your heart to think about all other stuff except the seed. Except true worship. Except honoring God. Your heart thinking about everything else uh, except giving. So imagine all the different things in your life that has entered into your heart that's against giving. It says, as he purposes in his heart. So giving has to be something that is creative. You don't want to give the Lord seeds that didn't require creativity. You just gave it. Oh, I'm just giving God my 10%. Here. Here. Baby, you bored with your giving. So if you bored with your giving, what you think God going to be excited about your giving? for? If your giving not exciting to you, if it didn't take much thought, if you didn't creatively, like, for instance, how about you have a baby shower and somebody bring you a pencil? If you have a baby shower and somebody come to your baby shower and give you a pencil and say, I was thinking about your baby. I gave you a pencil so that you can write. I just came with to give you a pencil, baby. Hey, I was thinking about you and your baby. I just came to give you a pencil. That didn't take nothing. And the pencil is used. The eraser done, done tore off. Somebody done bit it. Ah, looked like a dog done bit off the eraser. It didn't take them nothing to give that to you. So when you receive that pencil, in the back of your mind, you're going to be like, what is this? We get that from God. When we detect that it didn't take somebody anything to give us something, we look at them differently. We say, how could you do this? You didn't think I was worth more? This is a baby shower. You're not going to give me no pampers. You're not going to give me some, give me some cologne, baby. Give me some perfume. Give me something. Give me something I can use. What, what? Give me a pacifier or something. You see what I'm saying? But how much more God Almighty? He know what he done did to make sure that you even have money. So imagine you just give him a small portion that you don't even think about. Oh, bam. You give him a pencil seed. What you think he feel about it? And then you talk about, I want the Lord to give me a big old house. I want the Lord to give me a big old car. I want the Lord to give me favor at my workplace. I want the Lord. But, but you just disrespected him with your seed. Saints, there's an apostolic correction to this. When, 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 when the Lord has done much for you, it's disrespectful if you can't even so big for God. Could that mean that you don't waste your time? You have uh, mishandled God's goodness towards you, his mercy. See, saints, when I was at a certain level of sowing, I didn't want to stay there. So I started listening to the Holy Ghost. I said, Holy Ghost, tell me what to do so that I can be able to sow big money into you. I asked God to give me the $1,000 seed to sow. 
And when I sold the thousand dollar seed, it changed my whole life. I remember it was a. Uh, I remember Jesse the Planets gave me my first thousand dollars on the earth. As a man of God, rather. Jesse the Planets, which is a mighty apostle right now. One of the biggest men. Oh my gosh, he's second to none. He's a mighty man of God. Boom, boom, boom. He was the first one to sow a thousand dollar seed into me as a man of God. The second man of God that sold a thousand dollar seed into me was Dr. Mike Murdoch. And Dr. Mike Murdoch, he didn't just sow a thousand dollar seed. Dr. Murdoch had started sowing thousands of dollars into me, gave me a job at his ministry. But I used the seed in all those circumstances. I used the seed. I never stepped away from the seed. I humbled myself with the seed. And the seed kept on taking me from glory to glory because it's the presence of God. The seed is the presence of God. When I take that money and I make it a seed, in which I help God's work to go forth. I help my man of God. I take care of my man of God. That seed is the presence of God going before me. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Shout glory. Shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all going to have me preach until next week. Glory to God. I praise God for everything. Y'all trying to have me preach until next week. We give God all the glory. We give God all the glory. I've been preaching on here for like an hour or so. Y'all better get this. Y'all better get this. Y'all better get this because this is for your destiny. Prophet Joshua Holmes, don't listen to God. I done seen the hand of God in my life. This for your destiny. This for you. Somebody shout glory. Share this Yeah.